So you've built a funnel, you have ran it for a little while, and it sucks. And you're like, there's no way Michael has been gassing these up this much. There's no way other people use these funnels. Yeah, it sucks. These funnels suck. It's not converting. It's not doing anything. Well, here is how you can troubleshoot your funnel. Here we go. So we're going to break it down. There's three categories here. Number one, things you can personally control. Number two are things that you can influence and research. And number three are things that you can optimize. Let's go back to section one, things you can personally control. Use the clarity of your message. Here's the issue with it. You have a lack in clarity in communicating your value propositions. This is why I always talk about features, advantages, and most importantly, benefits. Whatever is in your funnel, whatever you're offering to people has to be of benefit to them. You can't have a terrible offer and a good funnel. It's not going to work, right? They, they don't line up. A good offer will work even in the presence of a bad funnel, and then we can fix the funnel later. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to review your funnel content, and you're going to ensure that all of your messaging clearly conveys the benefits, the benefits, not just the features, not just the advantages, the benefits of your dog training services. And then you're going to use simple language that resonates with your specific target audience, whatever that target target audience is. Service dog training, reactivity, puppies, obedience, daily manners. You get the idea. Here, number two, the call to action. Most people do not put a clear enough call to action. So if you have weak or unclear calls to actions throughout the funnel, it's not going to be as effective as it could be. So what you want to do is test out different calls to actions. Personally, I like to be as clear as possible. Click this button now to schedule a consultation with me. Click here to apply for training. Download my training guide now. The clearer you can be, the easier it is for people to take action. People don't take action when they're uncertain of something. If you build up their confidence by telling them exactly what you want them to do, it makes it that much more likely for them to click the button and do what you want them to do. And then finally, in this section is user experience. If it's complicated, if it's confusing, people aren't going to do it, right? That's why funnels work better than websites. So you're going to test your funnel for yourself and you can have your friends do it. You can have your family do it. I've sent it to my family and they're like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing here. Clearly, if my family doesn't know, then my clients don't know. So I need to make it easier for them to understand, all right? Simplify your navigation. Get rid of all of those buttons about about page, contact us, learn about our different offers, pricing. It should all be on the one funnel page. If it's on the one funnel page, like it should be, the navigation confusion goes away. Ensure a smooth flow, right? You're breaking down each step in the funnel to make it easier for them to take one step to the next to the snap. Just like we break down behavior to make it easier for dogs to understand, you're breaking down the application process to work with your uh, with working with you you're breaking down the application process for your clients. All right. All right. So the second section here is things that you can influence and research, right? Like just, you have to study this over and over and over again, target audience alignment. If your funnel is not resonating with the right to target audience, then you're going to have a problem. If your funnel is tailored towards single moms, but your marketing is tailored towards full families that have all, you know, all the time in the world and everybody should be working and pitching in. It's like, no, a single mom doesn't have enough time to pitch in. She needs quick, reliable results and maybe she gets the kids involved. Maybe she doesn't have time to get the kids involved. Those marketing messages, although they're very similar in dealing with behavior problems, are very, very different and the benefits are going to be different. So the funnel has to resonate with the right target audience. So what you want to do is revisit your buying personas. If you don't have buying personas, really, really simple. It's who do you want to work with? Who's your favorite ideal client? I'm sure I've made a video about it in the past. You can go check out the whole page and look for it. But buying personas are who is your ideal client and then everything about them that you could possibly imagine. Assure that your content speaks directly to their needs, the challenges they're facing, and the desires of the ideal client. And then adjust your messaging to better align with their preferences. Right, Just like I was saying, if you have a single mom who doesn't have enough time to train, she needs something fast, quick, and easy to do that's consistent and gets results. Very different than somebody who has a full family all working together. Right, Mom, dad, maybe grandma lives in the house, the kids are older. The messaging is going to be different. Competitor analysis. You can learn so much just from looking at what your competitors are doing. They might have additional resources that you don't. If you're starting out in a business, they're going to have a full team of uh, marketers. They're going to have a team of 
funnel builders. They're going to have a team of researchers. You don't have that. So basically steal their ideas. Whatever they're doing that's working, take it, adapt it to your own business, and then start to use it. Do not copy. I'm telling you right now, do not copy. It will not work. You'll just get frustrated. You'll be like, it's not working. It's do not copy. That's a very uh, bad thing to do. It is disgusting. It's gross. It's not good ethically. Like, just don't do that. But you can learn from them. Learn from them. M uh, model your business practices after successful competitors that you have. And then your social proof and testimonials, all right? So what you need to have is a showcasing of testimonials. If you don't have that in your funnel, it's not going to ver convert. You don't have enough authority. Right now, if you're a big name, Caesar Milan, Zach George, uh, Karen Pryor, all of those kinds of people, they can just have their names plastered somewhere and people will buy what they have to sell. You're not one of those people. So you need to build up the authority in another way. And the best way to do that is with testimonials. And even better than just testimonials are video testimonials. 76% uh, of people who come to a sales page watch those videos and make a decision. So you need at least six testimonials even better if they're videos. Now, the last section here are things that you can optimize. So after the funnel is live, it's you're, you fix the other things, you're starting to improve everything, you're going to want to really hone in on conversion tracking. This can get a little technical, very, very simple. All you really need to know is how many people landed on the page, how many people did something on the page, and how many people didn't do something on the page. All right, set up conversion tracking tools, you can use Google Analytics, you can use like a whole bunch of different things, you don't need to do that. Just pick some numbers that you can look at and then really hone in on them. Well, I need to get more people on that page. I need to convert more people on that page, or I need to follow up with more people on that page. And that leads us to the next piece here, which is email follow-up. If you are not following up with people, you are wasting opportunities. I'm not going to go over too much of it here because our video is getting long. So go watch my video on the fortune of follow-up. It's like three days ago. It's absolutely fantastic. It shows you exactly why email follow-up is so important. And last but not least, most people overlook this, and I did for the longest time. I thought like the people I was working with were older. They're going to be on the desktop. But most people now look at their phone, and that is how they're making decisions. Most people do 57% of the research before making a decision but to call you. right? They've already made a decision to work with you or not, so they're going to do it on their phone. They're going to do their research on their phone. So if you have poor performance in your funnel on the phone, that's probably contributing to why your funnel's not working. All right, so you want to test it on multiple devices, not just an iPhone, not just an Android. You want to get a Google. You want to get, uh, I can't even name <laughs> other brands, but you want to get a whole bunch of them uh, and really test out maybe the shape, the sizing is different or the processing speed is different, whatever it is. And you want to ensure that all of your elements are responsive and provide a seamless experience on all smartphones and tablets because a lot of people do research on uh, you know, their tablet or their laptop at home and maybe it's just a smaller screen. And mobilization is, is crucial for capturing a broader audience because you're interrupting them on social media and most people only watch social media on their phones. So it's very, very important to have mobile optimization. If you gained any valuable out of today's video, I would appreciate hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. If you have questions, put it down in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.